to our Calvary Outreach Fellowship Center family, our Facebook family, those that are following us, uh, Bishop George T. Brown Jr., First Lady Angela Brown. We are grateful to be with you again tonight on our Bible study, and we're going to continue with Psalm 91, uh, talking about a dwelling place. And, and, and I was checking um, the word dwell out, and it was talking about a safe place, a place where you actually live at. And when I said, man, it's a place where you live at, the Bible does say, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. So it's actually a living place, a place that you can stay there. It's a safe place, a place uh, that, that brings provision for your life. So again, we are, we are grateful that the Lord is bringing us um, live to you, that we can again have another Bible study night with you talking about um, a dwelling place, the goodness of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord. So go to Psalm 91 and, and get ready to follow us. We're going to pray us in, and then we're going to go straight into the Word. Father, thank you. We're grateful for another night of Bible study. And the Word declares we ought to study to show ourselves to prove unto thee, workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. We pray now, God, tonight you will give us truth that we would be made free by the blood of your son, Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, uh, grateful to be here. Um, we're excited about God. We're excited about God. Again, in the midst of it all, God is still on the throne. He's still protecting, providing, caring, lifting, pushing, and doing all the great things. Your first lady's getting ready to come in, and we are going to Go into our Bible study tonight, a dwelling place. A dwelling place, and we're talking about not just any dwelling place, we're talking about a fortress, uh, but but you have to dwell in there. Mm -hmm. And I think we ended at um, the ninth stanza, ninth yes. okay, because thou hast made the Lord, which is uh, my refuge, uh, even the most high, my dwelling place. Let's make sure I have the right, the right, the right version of it. Oh, boy. We have technical difficulties, so you see it falling. We're trying to hold it up. It, it keeps dropping, but we're going to hold it up. All right. All right, let's go. Okay. Uh, so because thou hast made the Lord, um, made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Uh -huh. So this writer he's uh, of this song, he's coming in three different uh, parts. He's coming as uh, an experienced person that's under the refuge of God. Uh -huh. And then this first part, he comes as an encourager um, of, of, the, of the word of God, encouraging someone. Wow. And then he'll switch up and, then, uh, and talk as if he is the Lord. Yeah. And so in this part, he's saying, um, because thou, thou hast made the Lord. And then he says, which is my refuge, take it personally, mm -hmm. uh, a dwelling place. Um uh, the, the, the refuge, even the most high, thy dwelling place. Wow. So we're, we're talking about that. Remember, we're talking about the most high God. So this is like not, uh, you know, if, you, if you're going <laughs> to pick a dwelling place, I think they were looking online and they were saying, where would you um, go if you were uh, have to go quarantine house yeah. and choosing who was in the house? And you, if I were to choose a house, I would choose a house with provisions. That's it. I would choose a house that's fortified. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't choose a house in the neighborhood. We're going to get break-ins all the time. <laughs> so, but, but this is the of the most high. So that's wow. telling you that you're covered under his resources yeah. and you're covered under his might. And, 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 and the protection is there. Yes. The main thing everybody in life, I believe, want, they want protection. You want to be protected. And he says... I'm your protector. I'm, I'm your provider. Um, I make provision for you. And I think when you talk about um, the Most High, we, we have so many different names. You know, uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Rapha. We're talking about the Most High God. So everything that we bring to the table as far as who he is, he functions in that particular state. So we say Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Not. Every state, every name we give him, he actually functions effectively in the state of the name that we give them. That's why one writer says, uh, uh, I am that I am. So Moses said, when I go to them, children, uh, 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 to either, what am I going to tell them? Who am I going to tell Pharaoh sent me? He said, tell them I am that I am. In other words, I'm the protector. I'm going to be your voice. Yes. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be your mouthpiece. Whatever you need me to do or say, I'm going to be there with you all the way. That's protection. That's provision. That's taken care of. Yes. That's the kind of God that we're talking about when we say, of the most high God. Great end. Go in. Go ahead. I, I love that, Bishop, because when he says, I am that I am, I am what? I am whatever you need. Wow. And I already know what you need. Mm -hmm. And so the 10th uh, stanza says, There shall no evil befall thee, uh, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So there is, 
there shall not evil befall thee. Mm -hmm. Well, that's predicated on if you're dwelling in a secret place. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, so you have to know where your help comes from. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we, a lot of people are now we're going through this crisis, and a lot of people think the finances their help. <coughs> But so they rely on finances to the refuge. If, if I just had enough money, everything's yeah. gonna be all right. If I just had a friend, everything's gonna be all right. If I had a bunch of good friends, everything's gonna be all right. If I have someone that loves me, everything's gonna be all right. But wow. no, but your, all your help comes from the Most High God. The Most High God. And I like a version that he says here you'll stand untouched and he'll watch it all from a distance. Yes. You'll stand untouched and God says, I won't let them touch you. And I'm standing back from a distance watching you, making sure that they don't touch you so it doesn't come nigh thy dwelling. And where you dwell, it can't come there either. And even where it's at, you won't be able to dwell there. Or if you dwell there, you go protected. You go covered. You go with provision. You go with that shelter that he talks about. And you're talking about a most high God. We call him a mighty God. Uh, and when you talk about mighty, one writer says he will work a mightily work in you. That means the might that God has in you works mightily in you, for you, through you, that God gets glory out of you. You ought to tell somebody tonight that God is working mightily in you, for you, that he gets glory out of you. Yes. Amen. And, and Bishop, I want to, because we're saying, um, there, it says there shall no not any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Uh -huh. So we know that there's a plague. But That's it right. says it won't come now thy dwelling. But remember the first part, it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the ah. Most High. So, you know, um, if you think of Job, many things befell Job. Mm -hmm. But it didn't come nigh thy dwelling once he dwelled in the secret place. Because yeah. God had already told <laughs> Satan, no, 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 you cannot ah. touch his soul. And that's the part that lives on. So we, we you know, um, I'll, I'll, let me just keep going. <laughs> but oh, I'll, I'll go there because, you know, um. A lot of Christians don't want to suffer anything, mm. but the Bible says we must suffer. That's right. That's right. Um, because Jesus suffered, and he and he relinquished his life, but he picked it back up again. <laughs> but so there is the thing that um, this life is temporary. This mm -hmm. life has a beginning and an end. But um, after this life is over, our soul has to go somewhere for That's eternity. It. And so I, I love it because you know, like Jesus suffered. He went through some things, mm -hmm. but he, he he gained the victory. He got victory. He got the victory. Yeah. So so when you say dwelling, you talk about secret place and staying there. So we're talking about staying there. Think about Jesus going to the cross. He stayed there. The Bible says it gave him joy to go to the cross. He became obedient even to the death of the cross. But he stayed there. Thorns upon his head, nails in his hand, nails in his feet, pierced in the side. The Bible said out came blood and water streaming down. They whipped him. But he stayed there because he was going to get up on the third day with total victory. So you got to stay there. You got to dwell there. And whatever happens there, you're still going protected. You're still going with a God that can do anything but fail. Yes. And so when First Lady said it's personal, um, he has an experience. I love the word you said. He has an experience with God. When you experience God, nothing moves you because you understand. He says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. Nothing moves you. Storms and plagues and, and, and valleys and mountains and trials and tribulations. Nothing yes. moves you because you're in that secret place. You're, you're dwelling in the secret place. You're staying in a safe place. Yes. It's good that when storms are riding and you know you're in a safe place. It's like being in a place that no matter what hurricane do, you know that place safe. You will hear all of the noise. All of the banging, but you stay there because why? You know it's a safe place. So God said, no matter what noise you're hearing on the outside, stay there, dwell there, because I've got a secret place for you, and I'm going to provide for you. Yes, it works for us in the end. Yes, it does. Okay, uh, and uh, I'll, just, well, I'll just go there because you know, um, many people when they come to the end of their lives, they're not worried about stock options. They're not worried about, do I have Gucci shoes? Mm -hmm. They're not worried about, you're worried about where your soul is going to go. Yeah. And so this is important that you have to have hope. Oh, mm -hmm. good word, hope. You have hope. to have hope, especially yeah. in these times. We must have hope. And I, I just, I got a, a, a Facebook from a, a gentleman and uh, he said, man, people are no longer chasing dreams. They're no longer dreaming. And, and when you have no hope, you don't dream anymore. But the Bible said this. Our young men shall dream dreams. Our old men shall see visions. So biblically, 
we ought to still be dreaming and having some visions because it's a uh, it's a point of reference to our destiny of where God has taken us. So when you're dreaming, you have hope. You you have hope and you're dreaming. You've got vision. You're seeing something past what you're seeing. That's a good word right there. You have to see past what you're seeing because that's what faith is. Amen. Faith is the sums of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. So God said, I'm not going to let you see everything, but I'm going to show you what you need to see and you need to point your direction into what I'm yes. showing you. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. So tell your neighbor that's sitting next to you, you're not going to see everything God's going to do. But whatever God said he's going to do, he's going to do it because he's a promise keeper. Amen. And so, Bishop, um, here, uh, verse 11, because there's some perks that comes along with serving the Lord. Ooh. A lot of perks. A lot of perks. Okay. And then it says, verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, important that this part says that, okay, he gives his angels charge over these, the angelic host, the ones that are not seeing. So so ones that are not seeing yeah. and helping you, you, you still have help. <laughs> So people don't, people are, oh, it's just me. No, you, you have help, yeah. okay? Um, but he should give his angels charge over thee, yeah. and it says to keep thee in all thy ways. Wow. But, uh, but um, this is how, how God works, the Holy Spirit works. It won't keep you if you don't want to be kept. Mm -hmm. and, and I like this part. He says that uh, he ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. So think about it. If I dwell in the secret place, wherever I go, God says, I ordered my angels to guard you no matter where you go. That's a good, that, that, that's a good place to be in, to know that wherever I go, God ordered and dispatched angels to guard me wherever I go. So if nobody else is there, God is there. And then God sent the angels to there to guard us, to, to, to order, to, to cover us, to be there for us. Mm -hmm. At any given time, any given moment. I never forget preaching a message that your blessings have been ordered. They've been or ordered and ordained by God already. So, so that no need to panic because when God gives an order, it must be carried out. And somebody's got to carry out the order of God. And he is a God of order. Amen. So, and Bishop, so when it says keep you in all your ways, not just where you go and what you do. Uh -huh. So I'm reminded of a scripture of someone wrestling with the angel. Ah, he Jacob. Said, I won't let go until you bless me. Yes. And he eventually prevailed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and also, I remember a, a scripture where a man prayed and prayed. In 21 days, he didn't hear anything. Wow. But what was happening? The angel was having, was charged over him, was, re was wrestling. He said he, the... Um, the devil withheld, withheld him up for 21 days. 21 days. But it didn't mean that it wasn't happening for yeah. him. Whoa. So that means what's delayed is not denied. Yes. What's delayed is not denied. So it was Daniel. And he said that the king of Persia held up my prayer for 21 days. And there was something happening in the atmosphere between Michael yeah. the archangel and, and, and he would go and fight for, fight him. for him. I'm telling you, man. So, so that's proof that God has ordered his angels to guard you and watch over you wherever you go. And trust me, when God ordered angels to watch over us wherever we go, that means God has a plan for us. God would not send angels to watch over us for what? And give That means there's a plan that God has for you and I. And all we got to do is follow the steps of the Lord, stay in the secret place, know we've got provision, know we've got protection. And know that our steps are ordered by the Lord. Yes, that's part of that fortification, Bishop. Fortification is many different layers. Ah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah. angel, even though the, he prayed, okay, day one, okay, I know he's going to do it. Day two, I know he's going to do it. Day three, Lord, do it. Day four, <laughs> Lord, I'm going to trust you. He had to have some kind of, because he kept praying, you know, 21, 21 days. Wow. So, you know, he was praying and he was waiting, but uh, probably there was a breaking point where he says, Oh my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus said, mm. why have you forsaken me? But 21 days, he was still fighting. The angel was still fighting on his behalf. So just because you don't see it, as Bishop said, a delay does not mean a denial. My, my. Because that's a part of walking by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's, I, like, I love 12, but I love the whole thing. 12 says, uh, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Mm. So you see that the, the angels are bearing you up, holding you up wow. in your hands. 
Isn't that beautiful? Keeping you from falling. Keeping you from falling. But not only falling, it says that you won't dash your foot against a stone. <laughs> but remember this, perils are coming. There's pestilence uh, in, in the previous verses. There's plague, there's pestilence, uh, there's 10,000 falling, and, uh, and the angels are holding you up yeah. in, in, your, in your hands, bearing you up in their hands. That's love. That shows how the tenderness of God, that shows that he cares, that he gives his angels and say, take care of my children. Yeah. Take care. Hold them up. Now, remember, there's all this thing going on, but he says this a little thing that won't dash their foot mm. against the stone. They're going to want you to stump your toe. Wow. So he says in one writing, you walk unharmed amongst lions and snakes and you walk unharmed. So these things shall not come thy dwelling because you have a shield or a shelter of protection. So here's what I what I believe. We've got to stop worrying about the when, the what, and the how. When you're going to do it, what you're going to do, and how you're going to do it. Yeah. God, all I know is you're going to do it. Trust you. I don't know when you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. And I don't know what you're going to do. But all I do know is you're going to do something that's going to work on my behalf. Because you have my best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. When everybody else has given up, when everybody else has throwed you, you away, God says, I got your best interest at heart because I have a plan that's ordained for you. And you only, and can't nobody do what I call and ordain for you to do. Somebody ought to give God a hand clap of praise because nobody can do what God has ordained for you to do. You have the power, you have the authority, you've been commanded to do it. Uh, you, you are an authentic individual in the kingdom of God. And God wants to do great things in your life. All he says is, trust me. Amen. And so, Bishop, the verse you were talking about is the 13. Because why he's bearing you up in your hands so you won't dash your foot against a stone. But it tells me that they take care of the little things. Yes. So, different layers. Okay, so, and then the 13 here is so great. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under their feet. So can you imagine tre uh, treading upon, walking on a lion? Okay, that tells me one or two things. Either either uh, I have subdued the lion or the lion has become submissive to my authority. That's it. That's it. The lion has become submissive to your authority and got to get out of your way. You know, like, like, like the mountains got to move. We're not climbing. The rough side of the mountain. We tell the mountain to move. Get out of my way, mountain, because I have somewhere to go. God has ordained my steps. God has, has caused his word to cause me to move, and I've got somewhere to go. I've got some things I've got to do, and God is sending me to some people I need to give a word to. So mountains have got to move out of your way. God says that in this season, you have power to subdue your enemies that will come against you, to subdue them, power to subdue them because you are in that secret place. You are, you, are, you are abiding, abiding, I love this part, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Abide says I'm standing no matter what happens. No matter what comes, no matter what go, I'm going to abide. I'm going to stay right there. Uh, a young boy's song years ago, safe in the arms of Jesus. Yes. But Bishop, can you imagine walking on the lion? <laughs> mm. And then, then it comes back and says, "A young lion and yeah. the dragon shall thou trample under their feet." So it's it's it's, it's talking about the um, adder, which is a snake, a viper, mm -hmm. and, and it says that they, you shall that you, you that, that ah, thou shall trample under your feet. So again, I remember a viper is a poisonous, like, like venomous wow. snake. But again, that means they have to be come submissive to your authority. Or either I have subdued them. Either way, right. I have the victory. Total victory. Yes. and So I'm, I'm thinking about this lion, the king of the jungle. He's a formidable foe. But mm -hmm. I'm also thinking about David because um, because he had faith in the Lord. He says, I killed a lion and a bear. Wow. But, but this dude says, a lion and a, a viper, a venomous <laughs> snake. So as a, as a believer, you and I have developed a track record. And the devil knows our track record. So he comes at us different ways because David had a track record. Are you kidding me? Do you not understand who I am and what I've yes. done? And you mean to tell me you think I can't handle the giant? Man, God is raising up giant killers. And, 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 and because God is raising us up in this season, we are really going to see the hand of God, the power of God, the authority of God not only happen in our lives, but in the lives of the people we're connected with. That's how powerful this next move of God is going to be in your life. All God says over and over, all I need you to do is trust me. Yes. I am a promise keeper. I'm a God that cannot fail. 
I change. If not, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I don't change. And if God doesn't change, and God has taken care of you all this time, what makes you think God is not going to continue to take care of you? He loves you. He cares for you. He's got blessings for you. He's got a plan with your name on it. Talk first, lady. 14 says, because he had set his love upon me, mm -hmm. therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Ooh. So he, this is he's talking as if he is the Lord God, the most high God. He says, because he has set his love upon me, because we love him so much. Um, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, he's not doing tit for tat. I want to say that because we can't out love God. He loves us yeah. so much. But he says this because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Mm -hmm. So I know him as a deliverer myself. Right. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Setting him on high says, I will give him the best of care. I will take care of him. I will give him the best of care. So you got to understand something. God says, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to give you the best of care. Victory. Total victory. No matter what happens, victory is yours. And the song said, it's today. Victory is yours today. Today. It's your victory is today. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody duke you out of your blessings and your miracles and the promises that God has placed upon your life. We have about more, three more verses. We're going to go through the verses because we really want to um, cap off Psalm 91 because uh, next Thursday night Bible study, we're coming to Psalm 46. And all we're going to talk about is God is. Yes. Oh, God Bishop. Is. Oh, I'm telling y'all, we're going to get ready for it. <laughs> Psalm 46, that God is. You can, you can put whatever you want next to that name, but God is is going to be what we're going to deal with. Let's come on and, and, and close Bishop, this out first, lady. When he, when he says, um, the Lord says, because he has known my name. Yeah. And so automatically I went to his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. So, but but in order to know him as that, you have to dwell in the secret you place. You have to dwell. If you want to know somebody, you need to get up under him. It, it's better not to hear of them, but to know of them. To know, know of them. To know of him. Uh, everlasting God, my Father, Prince of Peace. Um, you have to, to know him. But you, uh, again, so now is the time. Every time is a time to know the yeah, Lord. Yeah. To really, but uh, the wonderful part about it is also that we have access to him. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is, the more, First Lady said it profoundly, the more you hang around an individual, the more you're around and the, the more you get to know about them. You get to know this side, that side about them. Yes. You get to know everything about them. When, when you're married for 27 years, you start to know a little bit of everything about the individual. But you got to stay close. You got to stay close. And he said, if you just stay with me, if you stay with me, I will, I will take you places that you have not dreamed you would go to. I will do things in your life that have never been done. And I like that. That God says, I'll do something in your life that have never been done. That means to me, that what God is doing in my life right now, what God is doing in First Lady, like what God is doing in your life, that what's coming is better than what's been. Yes. You ought to be excited about that. What's coming is better than what's already been. So you, our slogan, one of our slogans is, the best is yet to come. You haven't seen nothing yet. I'm telling somebody that's watching, you haven't seen nothing yet. You have not yet seen uh, the power and the authority that God has placed on your life and how it's getting ready to manifest in the earth. Everything we're going through, it has purpose, it has reason, because only because the word of God says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and them who are called according to his purpose. And when you know you've been called according to the purpose of God, you know that it's not about you. It is about God's purpose in your life. And when God's purpose is carried out, you start moving on purpose, with purpose. Well, Bishop, I want to go back to the beginning of 14 because it says, because he has set his love upon me. Uh -huh. And so that means to me, it's deliberate. How, how many things that we set our love upon? We, we love people. We love places. We love things. Mm -hmm. um, you, we, can, we even name it. I'm a chocoholic. Um, I love this. I love that. But this said he has set his love upon me. And, and the really people say that. No, I have faith in you as, and not just as a helper. I have faith in you as a Lord. I have faith in you as a Savior. I yeah. have faith in you as my, as, as I have faith enough in you to give myself away so you can use me. Wow. So, that's so that's really important that he, that it says he has sent his love upon me. Mm -hmm. 
And, 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 and closing, first lady will read, but I'll just read something to you. One writer says, I'll rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll rescue you and then throw you a party. In other words, I'm going to rescue you and then we're going to have a Holy Ghost party because we're going to be grateful and we're going to be thankful that God rescued us, that God took care of us, that God protected us, that God provided for us. And, and, and we were listening, I, I believe it was last week, to a preacher. He was in Psalm 91, y'all. He was in the same song. And he said something very powerful. And I think First Lady was one brought it to my attention. He says, uh, if I never get the coronavirus, that means that God covered me. If I get the coronavirus, that means God is going to protect me. If I die with the coronavirus, that means I'm going to be with God. So either way it go, I'm still protected. Amen. And I still win. Hallelujah. Okay. Come on, First Lady. So uh, 15 says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. So these are I will, but, but the mm. first part says, he shall call upon me. So, wow. so how many of you, when, when trials come, when, when things come, you call in, uh, you phone in a friend, uh, you, you call in your mama and, and daddy, but you never call upon the Lord. Okay. But, but sometimes you call mom and daddy, mama will answer. Daddy says she called again with this foolishness. <laughs> <And> <laughs> you call your friend and give you wrong advice. <laughs> but he said, wow. if you call on me, I will answer. And it says also, I will be with you in trouble. Now, when trouble comes, people scatter. Whoa. People don't want to be with you in trouble. You want to lose a friend, get in some trouble. Lord, and see how, how bad they talk about you. So he says, I will be with you in trouble. And then he also says this so sweet, I will deliver yeah, you. Man. First of all, I will answer you. I will be with you. And then I will rescue you. I will wow. deliver you. And then, his, uh, and then it says, and honor him. Oh, honor him. Wow. That's good. Now, come on, bitch. That's good. How That's many good. people going to honor somebody that got in trouble? Wow. You're going to get talked about like... <laughs> You're going to get talked about. Get in some trouble. Man. They don't talk about you. But he says, I will only bring you out. Let me, I get you a good lawyer. He's mm -hmm. a, a counselor. <laughs> and so I'll get you out. Okay. And then he says, what? Well, I will deliver you. And then he says, I'll honor you. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And, and the close verse um, says, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. salvation. So he says, I'll give you a long life. Give you a long drink of salvation. So he says, I'm going to give you a long life. I'm going to give you a long life. And what, what I like about the protection, the provision, and the caring of God, even in these times, I want you to really see something. God is allowing you to get extra money. Um, those of you that, that have other uh, uh, means of uh, income, God is allowing things to be deferred for a moment. He's talking to the nonprofit organizations, 501c3, like the church. And he said, I can get you this type of money and you won't have to pay it back if you do this. So even in the midst of all of this that's going on, God is still providing for his people. He's still making ways. He's still opening doors. He's still proving I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm Jehovah Rapha. I'm Jehovah Nissi. Even though it all is going on, I am not going to let you die. I'm not going to let you fall apart because the Bible said, be not weary. And well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. This is not the season to faint. This is not the season to get weary. This is the season that we ought to trust God like we've never trusted God before. And I promise you that when we go back to the sanctuaries in full capacity, our churches are going to be overflowing because what's happening, uh, the, the, the world, the world, and we all taste the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. We taste the world. The world is now seeing they can't rely on nobody but God. I've never seen so many Facebook and, 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 and Instagram, Twitters talking about what God is doing. Or oh, you got to trust God. You got to <coughs> lean on God. Man, this is a beautiful thing. People are now pointing, leaning, depending on God himself. And even, even the church. The church is now saying, boy, I want to go to church so bad, I'm tired of staying home. Even though we are the church, I want to go get in that sanctuary so I can fellowship with, with the people of God. So when we come back in full capacity, our churches are going to be packed. They're going to be packed with people that are going to be hungry and thirsty after righteousness. So we can't give them traditional stuff. We can't go back. We got to go back and be effective. We've got to go back and be relevant because the people of God are going to be hungry. People coming out of the world are going to be hungry. And those that have strayed away 
are coming back because they're finding out the only resource I have is God himself. And most of us was reared up in the church. We, we, our grandparents and parents taught us about God. So we, we know the word. We don't have to preach you about the word. You know the word. But what is happening is God is waking up the world to prove to us or to show us he's still God. He still loves us. He's still protecting. He's still providing. And all we got to do, he that abide in the secret place, the shadow of the most shall abide in the shadow of the most high. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Yes, Bishop, I, I want to say this in my in the statement that the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. And because he is a refuge and a fortress, it doesn't mean that you will not be under attack. It doesn't mean that things will not come against you. In That's fact, right. they will. Uh, but it means that he'll never leave you or forsake you. Uh, he'll be with you until the end. But it, uh, he's done his part. We have to do our part. We that's have it. to abide in him. Yeah, and that's a great thing. Uh, let me say this. Um, if, if you want to give any donations to the ministry, um, cash app is dollar sign Calvary 920. Um, those of you that may not be tithing at other churches, you may not have a church and you decided through many Bible studies and hearing Sunday messages on live, you want to tithe. If Calvary is the place, again, cash at dollar sign Calvary 920. Um, we'll be live on Sunday morning, Easter Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We're excited about that. We'll be yes. live streaming then um, for our Sunday word. And we're praying you tune in at 11 o'clock. We'll be 11 uh, to about 11.30, 11.45, giving you the word from the Lord. And we're excited about what God is doing. God is doing amazing things in the earth. People are being blessed. They're being strengthened, empowered. And most importantly, we're being challenged. Yes. We're being challenged. Yes. Our faith is on trial. And God knows we have the righteous judge. Amen. So again, we love you so much. Um, God bless you to our Calvary family, um, our Facebook family, those that are, are watching us live. First lady, I love you. We're praying for you. We're praying for your family, uh, praying that God would do great things. Let us pray out in the name of the Lord. Father, again, thank you for the word tonight. We are so excited about what you're doing. Um, we have an amazing dwelling place. God, we pray for families that have been affected by the coronavirus, families that have lost loved ones during this time and was not even able to speak to them in person. God, we pray for those that are still going through. God, that you will continue to cover us with the blood of your son, Jesus, and we will continue to mark in your word, 2 Corinthians 7, 14, if my people which are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. I would hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Heal the land, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God Amen. bless you. We love you in Jesus' love name. Love you. Hallelujah. Hey, get us off of there. Oh, man, get this off. He's trying to get us off, y'all.